Hey, what's up YouTube? I've got an exciting video for you today. I'm getting ready to do some upgrades on this machine. I just did CAN bus on this and the XOL tool head and some other things, but thanks to Johnny over at PJ3D, he sent me some really sweet LED lights to put in this and upgrade it to a little bit better. Also sent me this really awesome ruler. I, I love rulers and this thing is really sweet. So he's got a lot of different things on his website, but the ones we're dealing with today are gonna be the Daylight XXLs for this Boron 350. There's all kinds of other ones. There's DIY kits, there's lights for the tool head, rulers, <laughs> things like that. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. So the ones we're gonna be using today is called Daylight on a Stick XXLs. All the information for these is also right here. It also comes with some more links and stuff for the GitHub and some slot covers to cover up your wiring and make it nice and neat. Also, I just wanna say thank you to Polymaker for supplying the filament for this video. They've got lots of different colors of filament, lots of different blends of filament. Also, if you happen to check out my live streams, you're there Saturdays at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I do give away a spool of filament from them, so check that out. And Maple Leaf Makers is great. They have some STLs here that they design these boron overcasters. If you go into the STLs, so when you get in here, you just wanna pick which kind of light that you have, then that will be the STL that you print. Then you're gonna need the mounting clips. So here you'll just pick if you have a 2020 extrusion or a 1515. They also have different sizes, like a larger and a smaller one. I had to print the large ones for mine to get them to snap in better. So that there will just depend on where you got your extrusions from and maybe just give it a test fit to see and if it's too small or too big, print the other one. So then go back to the STLs and into the diffusers. So just pick the one that matches the LED that you're using. This has a C in front of it, and like most boron mods and things like that, C means you need to print it in a clear filament. You can use clear PETG, or you can use like a natural ABS, but I would recommend using the clear PETG for this. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for me, the like button if you like the content, and let's see if we can get this thing glowing. So now that we have our parts ready here, I'll go through the assembly and show you how to do this. These are the LED strips. These come from PJ3D. These have the CRI 90 plus chips here. They are very bright, much brighter than the ones I have. I'll show before and after. Then we got the four mounts here. Then we have these here they slide into. And this is the diffuser. You wanna print this in a clear or a natural color filament. It goes over the top. So I'll show you guys how all this goes. The only thing is with this, I've already clipped this off it's gonna have two of these. It's gonna have one on each side like that. So clip one side off, that way you can get it to slide in place here. So this is gonna slide in the bottom. There's two channels here. So you got one channel at the bottom and then one channel at the top for the diffuser. So I'm gonna slide this in place. It'll go all the way down like that so. It's flush. Okay, that's what we're looking for and it's in. So this will slide over like this as your diffuser. I'll show you that in just one moment. So these are the mounts. You're gonna to wanna to put your heat inserts in this. You can put it in this side right here as you look at it. These little grooves right here is, these are gonna snap up into your extrusion on your printer. The top of the extrusion, it'll go in the bottom side of it. I'm gonna show you exactly how it goes in in one moment. So once you get that snapped in there, you'll have a spot here and this We'll go in here like this, and this is gonna screw onto that. So it's gonna hold it in place. So before we move on to putting these on the machine, we're gonna take these mounts and mount them on here. But one thing I learned in this process is you know we use these socket head cap screws for everything we build almost. Don't do it here because it's not gonna fit. You won't be able to fit your diffuser on top of it. Okay, so use button head or flat head would work. So either one of them would be fine. Just don't use socket head cap screws here. Just watch it how that is lined up right here as well. Verify that before I do this, this is gonna fit on and not get stopped right there. So that's good. So it passes that point. If you have a socket head there, it'll go boop 
and hit it right there. These are gonna mount on the top extrusion here, but on the bottom side. When you do cut these, when you cut your one side of these, be cautious or be aware of which side you cut. You can cut the wrong one. And let's say this one, for example, where I have to hook the connection up up front. And that's fine, you can run it down the front extrusion, but just if you wanna run your wires down your back extrusion, just be aware of where your connection is gonna end up being at. So this one's gonna go right here. Now at this point, before we snap this in place, this is when we wanna put our diffuser on. So we'll slide it in. Make sure it goes all the way to the end. And there we are. Now we can go ahead and snap this in place. Everything's on, just push up in there tight, snap it in place, line it up the best you can. Use the good old fashioned finger here, finger there measurement. There we go. Now we can flip it over. So that's in place, then we can reach in here and plug this connection in. So in my case, I already have two sets of wires up here. I can control them differently and that's not really necessary in this situation. I just need to get power to here and here. So you can run two separate lines. If you have the LDO kit with the PCB board, it mounts on the side, you can do that. But if you have to run it yourself, you can just run two separate lines down, or you can run one line to the other and connect them and run it down. However you want to do it, there's multiple ways for that situation. What I'm gonna do with mine is I'll run both the wires down under the machine, and then I'll connect them together under there. You can't really see down in here, but if you look at this, you'll, you'll pretty much see a D and a V above it. The V is the 24 volt and the D is the ground because it just says 24 V and then it says ground and you're just catching the last bit of it. So make sure, double, triple check to make sure that your 24 volt is going into the right pin here. You don't want it to blow, blow this thing up now. So do that, just set it in place right there. What I do is just take a pair of needle nose and just gently squeeze and then Pull on it, and you're good. Now we can plug the other one in and get underneath the board and take a look there. This right here is just the wiring that goes under the board. I just have two wires here. I cut this one already. I kind of measured them the size and put a bend in it. I already know this is my negative wire. That one I typically put a piece of black on it. That way I know that one's negative since I have both black wires. Give it a pull right there. Anytime you crimp these wires, give it a pull, make sure it's solid. So my board I have is a Big Tree Tech Octopus and you may have a different type of board, but they all have fan headers and things like this. So what you're gonna wanna do, this one has eight fan headers here, from here, starting right here, going over. They, these are labeled fan headers. You can use these for your LEDs as well. And then you have these ports right here. You got four of them. These are 24 volt only. So if you do use one of these, there's actual jumpers right here beside each port that you can move over and you can change it from 24 volt to 12 volt to five volt. So if you have a 12 volt LED light, you can use any of these ports and move that jumper over to 12 volts. Or a five volt LED light, you can move the jumper over to five volts. So we'll plug into the third port over from here and we're gonna look at the pinout for the octopus to see what the pin definition is on this. So this is the pinout for the octopus board I'm using, the 1.1, your board may be different. So if we zoom in on this, you can see how they have them labeled J56, 57, 55, like that. I know on mine that we just plugged in, this is the HE connections. It's the third one over from here, so it's gonna be J50, 51, 52. J52 is what we have it plugged into. If you look right here below it, you'll see the labeling J50 through J56. Where I've just plugged mine into, it is J52, so that pin is gonna be PD12. You wanna log into your printer now for this part, and you're gonna go into configuration. So you'll wanna to go to your configuration section and go to your printer.config. And once you get in there, you can put this anywhere you want, but I'm gonna put it under LED case lighting section. If you do some hashtags and write whatever you want, you can put it underneath that area. I already have mine copied, so I'm gonna paste it in right here. So you need it to say output, pin, and then you, after that section right there, after that space, you can write what you want here, and that's what it's gonna be called in main cell or fluid. Make sure you put an underscore if you have a space in between the things. 
Over here, we figured out it was pin PD12 where we plugged it in. That's what we want to have there. And just I will put this part right here in the description so you can just copy and paste as well. So save and restart. Hit the home button up here. Now if you scroll down, you will see it says chamber light here. You can adjust it as much as you want here, 50%, 100%, right there, and we're good to go. So let's get out our handy dandy cheap little voltmeter here. Let's put it on DC. I put the tape on this because I know that this one is the negative, the one with the tape on it. And I'll plug this one in or just touch it on there. And there we go. We're not reverse polarity or anything. We've got 24 volts, so we're all set. We can go ahead and plug it in. What we want to do is we're going to shut the lights off in here. Well, we're going to turn this thing on and see what it looks like. All right, so the lights turned out really good. I think they look great. That's kind of hard to see on video here, but the light is a lot more clean. It looks better. I don't know if it's the diffusers and the high quality lights or what it is. It's kind of hard to show. But a couple things I want to remind you. Make sure you don't use socket head screws on this is one of them. Make sure you also put your diffusers on before you snap them in place because then you're just going to have to take it back off because you can't slide it in there otherwise. I just want to give thanks one more time to Polymaker for the filament for this. Johnny, thank you. I appreciate this ruler too. PJ3D, check them out. Look in the description of this video. You're going to see the links to all this information. And most important of all, thank you all for watching. I will see you on the next video.